Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly glad to be here today. Amen. Uh, just by way of quick announcement, we are coming into the cold and flu season. If you're cold, you're fluing, stay home. Amen. I seem to have the ability to catch it real easy. So don't, don't, don't bring your cooties to church. Keep them at home. Amen. If you'll open your Bibles with me, please, to the book of James, chapter number four. James, chapter four, verses eight and nine. I have some other scriptures too, but I'll just read them as, as I go along. James 4 and 8 says, Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. And we'll stop right there. Just would like to use this morning for a subject, drawing close to God. When you first read this scripture, it almost sounds like God does not want his people to be happy. You know, he says, be afflicted and mourn, weep, let your laughter be turned to mourning, your joy to heaviness. It sounds like God is wanting his people to not be happy at all. But that's not what this scripture is talking about. He's not referring to the saint of God that's living a holy life. He's talking about those who are sinners, those who are double-minded. Because there is a condition that you can get into when you are walking with God and you begin to ease away from the Lord, yes. you can get into a condition where you're really happy. You're, everything seems to be going good. And it's just a trap of the devil. Right. Because the enemy knows that once he can get you to start walking away, on, he'll now. ease up off of you. Right. He will make it easier for you to walk away from God than it is to walk towards God. That's where the fight comes in. When you want to do right, that's when you get a real fight on your hands. Yeah. But if you're trying to ease away from the Lord, he'll, he'll see a way to make it for you to, to do that and not have a big struggle on your hands. And so this is what James is talking about here. Those who are in this condition of not having committed a sin, but sinners. Not having... <coughs> made a decision and then changed your mind, but someone that's double-minded, somebody that's on fire for the Lord today, but when their friends come around, it's like, well, eh, you know, but I, I see that happening with the church today. I see it happening where we will take a stand in the church on something really strong, you know, We'll stand on, there's only two genders. And then when we get out in the streets, well, you know, that's up to them what they want to be, you know, because we don't want people to criticize us. That's being double-minded. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. And so there's, it's not talking about how you can just sometime or once in a while do something, but we're talking about people who are living this kind of lifestyle. He said you should be in mourning if you're not living right. Amen. But how do you draw close to God who's everywhere? Amen. Well, there's another scripture that says, call on the Lord while he may be found. God is everywhere, but you can get yourself in a place where you can call on God and you can't find him. That's what that scripture is talking about when he said, call on the Lord while he may be found. It's letting you know there's a time when he may not be found by you. And so... You need to do it while, as they used to say, strike while the iron is hot. You better do it while God is dealing with you because you can get to the place to where you're just satisfied. You know, we sing that. We used to sing that all the time, satisfied in Jesus. Said he would be my comfort, said he would be my guide. You know, we, we, we used to sing that, but there's a condition you can get into where you're satisfied in life. And you ain't nowhere near Jesus. 
So James lays out the steps on how the, you can be considered in these, this condition where you're wrong with God. And so we need to always be finding ourselves in a position of trying to be right with God. Too many people today are living a life that's raggedy. You, can, you see it all over where they talk about the Lord, but they're not living anything for the Lord. They're talking about Jesus, don't know nothing about Jesus. Hey Amen. I started to preach that this morning. Who do you say I am? But the Lord just kept on dealing with me about getting close to him. They feel like as long as they're close to the edge but haven't stepped over the edge, they're all right with the Lord. They're just kind of happy-go-lucky as long as, as long as I'm living, you know, uh, uh, somewhat of a holy life. So as long as I'm living the kind of life where I am at least know there is a God. I, I heard someone say one time, I backslid, but I never really, I kept on going to church because I don't want to get too far away from the Lord. We're backslidden is backslidden. Amen. If you're going to get out there in the street, go and get out there. Don't, don't backslide and stay at church. What's the point of going to hell from church? It doesn't make sense at all. So you can't be living uh, in sin Sunday morning and get up out the bed of sin and then come to church and you all right with the Lord now and you shouting all over the church. Amen. Now, listen, uh, there's, a, there's a, a term for it in the book of Leviticus in chapter 10. He says this, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come nigh me. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. If you're going to come into the presence of the Lord, you can't come any kind of way you want. That's offering strange fire. God is clear that he is holy. God is clear. I, have got, I need sanctified people. I need people that are close to me. Now, you can come to church. Amen. That's fine. But don't pretend like you're getting close to God and you come in any kind of way you want to come. Amen. We attempt to come into his presence with formulated worship teams. We attempt to come into his presence with formulated prayer. You're not saying your prayers. You're reading somebody else's prayer. And if you look at some of the song books, I don't think we've got any of them. But they used to have the song books. And at the back of them, they have prayers in the back of the song book. Man, that's a formulated prayer. You need to talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can't attempt to come into his presence with a formulated sermon. There's some churches where no matter where you go anywhere in the country, if you go to one of their churches, you're going to hear the same message because they've already been told what to preach. God's not in that. Amen. Amen. You can't come to God with formulated testimonies. Amen. And I've heard people with those where they always got a special kind of something like they worked on their message that they want to deliver at testimony time. They worked on their little sermonette that they want to give to you at the time of testimony service. That's why a lot of churches today don't even allow testimony service. We done gotten into beating up folks and preaching my, my pet doctrine and telling people how I feel about the, the way I see things the way they ought to be. You know, we kind of turn testimony service into our own little pulpit. Right. Amen. Right. God's not involved with anything like that. No, he's not. Amen. God's not around when it's not spontaneous. Right. Amen. Amen. You can't, God's not around when you're trying to cheerlead people into his presence. Amen. Man, God can't be cheerleaded. God can't be faked out and, and, and you make people, everybody stand on your feet and let's all just j jump three times for Jesus. God ain't in the midst of none of that. If you love the Lord, you love him. Amen. Amen. I, I, I don't need anybody telling me now, if you love your wife, go kiss her. That's exactly when I'm going to do the opposite of that. Man, don't tell me how to love my wife. And don't tell me how to love my God. Amen. If I'm close to God, there, I, listen, let, let me just slow down for a minute and tell you about something that I've seen. I've seen it in churches where they said, just give a sentence praise. And somebody just stand up and say, 
I love the Lord because he's been good to me. And sit down and the church just blow up. Why? Because they was obedient. Why? Because they weren't trying to cheerlead you into the presence of the Lord. Why? Because it was genuine and sincere. But when you get up and you're trying to fake your way into making people think you got a relationship with God, all you're doing is making people think that you love the Lord and pushing your own self away from the God that you're pretending like you love. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 10, he says, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We've got a right to come into the presence of the Lord. He said, not not by the Old Testament, but by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say his flesh. Why? Because he died for me. And now I have a right to come into his presence said, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We have a right to come into the presence of God. And it's something, it's like voting. You have a right to vote, but nobody should make you vote. You got a right to do it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. You have a right to come into the presence of God. You have a right to worship the Lord. You have a right to thank him for all that he has done. But nobody should force you. Amen. Today, we made it so easy. God has made it so easy for us to come into his presence. He's made it so easy for us to come and talk to him. He's made it so easy that most of us have begun to take it for granted. We have the ability to boldly come into the presence of God. There was a time when man, if he wanted to talk to God, he had to go tell the priest. And if God wanted to talk to man, he would tell the prophet. You didn't have access to God. But now we can boldly in to the holy presence of God without fear of any kind of judgment and condemnation by God. We can come and talk to him if we want to. We can come into the presence of God any time of the day or night. There's no set schedule when you can talk to God. Talk to him whenever you want. Amen. Amen. I was just uh, up at a conference last week. I woke up at 1.30 in the morning and just started talking to the Lord. It's a good thing when you can just talk to God whenever you want to talk to him. We don't need any special training. You know, a lot of times people feel like, I didn't pray right. No, you don't know how to pray anyway. You don't need special training to talk to God. All you got to do is just talk to him. Tell him what's in your mind and on your heart. And God knows already what it all means anyway. Amen. We don't need to be a minister to be able to talk to God. A lot of time we feel like the only ones that can reach heaven are those that are in the ministry. No, 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 no. Anybody that's got the Holy Ghost, I don't care how long you've had it, got a right to come into the presence of God, got a right to talk to God, and he will talk back. Amen. But now we have today... Because God is so good and because God has made it so easy for us, a lot of times people just feel like coming to the presence of the Lord is just kind of a humdrum thing. You know, eh, you know, we, we're getting ready to have church, y'all. And it's like, oh, I wish he would hurry up and sit down. We've gotten like that. It's not a special thing anymore. It's not something precious anymore. We have lost our reverence for the things that are holy. Amen. What do I mean by that? The Bible says that we are a holy people and we've lost our reverence for holiness, for holy people. Amen. We are bad mouth God's folks and not think nothing of it. Amen. We don't come into his presence at any time. Some of us, some of us know that we can come into the presence of God whenever we want and never come into his presence. Amen. We enter into his presence with joking and playing and laughing and clowning. We'll come up in the church, hee-hawing and carrying on. We come in, they singing the songs, and, and we back hunching each other and joking and, and passing notes back and forth to each other. <laughs> Read this. But no, 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 we don't do it like that anymore. We, we do it with these. You know, we're like... 
and supposed to be having church, supposed to be coming into the presence of the Lord. And we're so busy playing and joking and talking. We don't have any respect for the things of God. Amen. We, we have to be careful in our walk with God. And we, we especially have to be careful to not let the devil talk us out of our walk with God. Man, the devil will make you feel unworthy to come into his presence. The devil will make you feel like you have no right to come into his presence. Amen. The devil will seek to make you feel like something's wrong with you. There's something wrong that you should get right before you can get up and pray. Something wrong with you that you need to get right before you can lift your hands and give God thanks. But yet the scripture said, let everything that have breath. Praise the Lord. He didn't say everything holy. He didn't say everything living right. He didn't say everything that's that's been preparing and and getting ready for it. But everything ought to give praise to the Lord. Amen. And you know what the devil will do? He'll quote scriptures to prove to you that you're wrong. Amen. We're not better than Jesus. The devil quoted scriptures to prove Jesus. He, he quoted scriptures not to prove anything to Jesus. He, tr- he quoted scriptures to, get, to trick him. Right, right. I mean, how are you going to trick the word with the word? Right. That's crazy. Amen. If he's bold enough to try to trick God, right. what makes you think he ain't going to try after you? Amen. He'll quote scripture to you. Bring a scripture to your mind to condemn you. Amen. Ain't got nothing to do with what you've been doing. Got nothing to do with your life whatsoever. Ah, the, you know, I heard the preacher say thus and so. And you go home and the devil will tell you, that's you. And there you sit. Oh, I can't pray tonight because the scripture said this, that, and the other. And we don't know. We don't quote him back scripture. We don't quote scripture to ourselves. We'll let our flesh trick us. Amen. Right. I quote scripture to me. Amen. I, I quote scripture on my own self. Because the devil, he's bold. The devil will try to make you feel like there's something wrong. That's good, Pastor, right? And I have to keep telling myself, what kind of God would make Amen. you be wrong? Heap condemnation on you and not tell you why. Amen. That ain't the devil, that's me. That ain't God, that's me. That ain't God, that's the devil. The devil is trying to make me feel bad. But I know that I can talk to God. That's why I have to, I have to encourage myself. Amen. I have to keep telling me that I can be all right. You know what? If I just quote the scripture to me. Because the devil, he He'll quote it to me. Why can't I quote it back? Amen. It's funny how it's funny how we can not remember any scripture, but we can remember the ones that condemn us. You know why? Because that's the devil bringing it to your mind. The devil will tell you all kind of stuff. And then there you sit and trying to figure it out. I've had saints call me not once or twice. Many saints call me. I feel like I've done something wrong, but I don't know what it is. Would you pray for me? I said, pray for what? (laughs) What am I praying for? Well, well, you know, I just I I just feel condemned like there's something wrong with me. I'm like, well, that's you. What am I praying about? All I can do is just pray. But I can't pray for you because you haven't done anything. God's not, God's not going to get you and not tell you why. Amen. Well, I don't, I don't know. I just feel bad. You know why? Because you're trusting in how you feel. Right. Amen. This scripture is not talking to someone that's living holy. It's talking to folks that's living in sin. Amen. And if we're not careful, we will allow the devil or our flesh to talk to us and tell us, we, you wrong with God. I don't know why, but you are wrong. The devil will tell you that. I don't know what you did, but you're wrong. And you're like, you know what? He's right. I don't know what I did either, but I'm wrong. Amen. We have a privilege to come close to God. Let me tell you what the Lord told Moses. Draw not nigh hither. Take off your shoes. See, in the Old Testament, Moses was the first pastor. Didn't have a right to come to God. He had to do it way the way God said. Take your shoes off and stand here barefooted. Amen. But we can come into church with shoes on. Please. In the New Testament, he said, for the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did. By the which we draw nigh unto God. We have a right to get close to God, and we ought to take advantage of that right. 
And I'm going to tell you one more thing, too. Not only will the devil try to condemn you and make you feel like you ain't got a right to come close to God. Hallelujah. Somebody said saints. <laughs> saints will do it, too. Saints will tell you. It, not well, ain'ts, not saints, ain'ts. <laughs> Folks that ain't living right, I tell you, what you doing getting up at the altar? Yeah, you need to be at the altar. They do all kind of stuff. They say all kind of crazy things. Mm -hmm. You need to spend more time at the altar. If you spent more time at the altar, maybe you spend less time doing wrong. You got all kind of crazy stuff to tell. But you got to learn how to love God for you. He said, you can come close to me. We ought to do it. Because the day is coming when you won't feel him. The day is coming when you won't feel that anointing. The day is coming when you won't feel that joy, 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 joy down in your heart. You won't feel it. But if you've got a close relationship with the Lord, that day may come. Let me just use a natural example. There's times when my wife will say to me, do you love me? Just get on my nerves. <laughs> what do you mean, do you love me? I just told you yesterday, well, I need to hear it again. Well, well that's because whatever, she wasn't feeling it. She, she wasn't feeling that love. She needed me. Sometimes it's like that in our walk with the Lord. I don't feel him near me. Well, if you don't feel him, feel after him. Right. Amen. Tell him, I, I don't feel you right now, Lord. I need to feel I guarantee you, you get down and you start praying. You start talking to the Lord. You start worshiping the Lord. You start telling him how much you love him. He ain't going to have a choice. God will let you feel him. He, he'll let you feel something. God will do it. But if you sit around talking about, I don't feel nothing. Ain't nothing happening. I just ain't feeling it. Uh, I don't know if I'm right with the Lord or not. I'm not feeling nothing. Yet, yeah, No, if you sit around complaining, you won't feel nothing. But if you get down and start worshiping the Lord, ain't that what the Syrophoenician woman did? He said, I can give the children's bread to dogs. And she got down and worshiped him and got something no other Gentile had gotten. She got a blessing from God. Why? Because she worshiped him. So if you're not feeling him, start worshiping him. And God will make his presence known. Amen. Draw close to the Lord.